You know, there's only one way to beat fascism, and we're not doing it so far. Check this out. Leave your comments, ding the bell, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel. Big event. I, you know, it's just like, what? And then there's the boat, you know, the, the flotilla. Uh, Louise and I lived on a boat in, in, in the Capitol Yacht Club in, in, the, in the Washington Harbor for seven years. Um, we had a, a 46-foot uh, Chris Craft constellation. It was made in 1986. We bought it used. We sold it uh, when we were done. It was, it was good living. It was uh, relatively inexpensive, actually, all things considered. And uh, to live in Washington, D.C., kind of right in the middle of everything. And it was fascinating. We got to know some just wonderful people there. Um, but one of the things I learned, you know, owning a big boat, is that you go slow <laughs> in a big boat because you got, you know, I mean, it's like 30,000 pounds of weight, right? Moving, you, know, you, you move more than five miles an hour and you're going to throw a wake out that's going to swamp smaller boats. And that's apparently what happened. And the people in this, uh, in this boat thing in, in uh, Travis, Travis Lake, Texas, um, uh, the, the big boats were, well, everybody apparently was just behaving badly, ignoring distress calls, swamping each other. And it wasn't like, you know, Antifa showed up with big boats. These were, these were, these were Trump humpers who were just, you know, blowing each other off, you know, person by person. So anyhow, I mentioned in the last hour that I was going to talk about what the Democrats need to do right now. And this, this, uh, you know, I was sharing with you a piece by Umer Haik earlier. This is from uh, EAND.co. Um, which is kind of a subpart, I believe, of, of uh, medium.com. And Umer s- I- I wrote this brilliant piece. He said, take it from us survivors. This isn't how you fight fascism. And, and writes, to really fight authoritarians and fascists, you have to do three things, none of which Joe Biden is doing. It's not enough to make vague moral appeals. Oh, okay, you guys are misbehaving. You shouldn't be advocating killing people. Stop saying that there's very good people. You know, don't. Don't even bother. He writes, nobody cares in such desperate moments as these for the luxury of mort- morality. People are concerned with self-preservation, first and foremost. This is how America got here, how we entered a classic fascist spiral. In 2010, the American middle class, as a result of 30 years of Reaganomics, became a minority. What happens, he writes, when a nation suddenly becomes massively poorer, when 80% of your country live hand to mouth, 75% of your country can't pay all their bills, when the average person dies in debt? Well, then life becomes a bitter, brutal struggle, an effort at self-preservation. And the fascists love this. This is the perfect setup for fascist government because they are the peak of politics of self-preservation. That's what they, that's what they sell. It's those hated minorities, those dirty, filthy subhumans. That's why my life is going nowhere. And Umer writes, this is exactly what happened in America and that's why morality serves no purpose. In 2016, Trump got into the White House because the secret hate vote came out. Why didn't they show up in the polls? Because people didn't want to admit White people didn't want to admit that they were voting hate. But morality is not what works. So what do you have to do? When you're fighting fascists, you have to begin by teaching people about the dangers of fascism. That when when fascism arises in a society, it always destroys that society. Always. Do you really want to give the most violent, stupid men in society the power to jail and torture your kids? Over what? Hate and fear of black people? You can't appease fascists, Umeri writes. You must choose. The middle ground is not an option. If you try to be inoffensive to the fascists, you will lose Trump's silent majority. If, on the other hand, you speak out in a way where you reach that silent majority, you lose the hardened fringe. So basically, this is the choice. There's two people who support Trump. There's the quiet, basically, you know, fearful racists and and, and fearful for their their future group. That's the majority of Trump supporters. And then there's a small, hardcore minority who are fascists. And if you start calling Trump a fascist and you start calling the Republican fascist, you're going to piss off that small minority who actually are proudly fascist, the ones who show up with Nazi flags. But you may just get through to enough 
of the people who are simply afraid for their job to get it. So, you know, when somebody says, oh, Joe Biden's a radical socialist, you don't debate that. You just turn around and say, and Donald Trump is a fascist and he's taking us down the same path the Nazis did. Umar says, we survivors and you real Americans are simply on different planets. You cannot fight fascism with lightweight moral appeals. You cannot fight it with complaints. You cannot fight it with objections. A collapsing society is a place where morality has gone out the window and life becomes a brutal affair. You must fight fascism by making a simple, tough, serious choice. You must call it fascism. You're listening to the Tom Hartman Program. Call 202-808-9925. He writes, you don't fight a bully by trying to reason with him. You punch him in the nose in a place where everyone can see it. And Joe Biden still hasn't said the word fascism. 